Larry Merchant, uh, among the many questions, how do we know if he's for real? How do we specifically know if he can take a punch from a legitimate hard puncher in this division like Kevin Kelly? We don't know, Jim, and that's why we're here. The story takes place at the beginning of 1996. The 42-1 former champion Kevin Kelly is rebuilding his career after being dethroned by Alejandro Gonzalez in 1995. After the loss and two draws in a row later, he will find himself delisted from the Ring Magazine ranks, with the boxing critics believing that Kelly is a washed up fighter. He will find himself at another crack fighting for the newly created belt, the World Boxing Union title, against Louis Espinoza. Kelly would put up a far better show compared to his last two outings, showing the public that he is still here and he's ready for top competition. Yeah, so you finished, you through. I said, I can't be finished and through. I'm 40, I'm 42 and one. How can you say I'm finished? I still got legs, I still got hand speed, I still got a punch. I can't be finished. I let all the critics, I want to tell all you critics out there that said I was washed up and finished, in your face. Okay. I did it tonight and I showed you. In Kelly's next fight for his first defense, he will find himself up against number nine ranked Derek Gaynor. This was a maker break fight for Kelly as this fight is on HBO and a win here will put him back in the mix. Back and forth action, Gaynor getting the better of it early, a bit of a mix up in the final minute of the third round, a big right hand on Kelly before he had slipped into the canvas. Gaynor thought he had Kelly in trouble and pressed out on the offensive. Kelly catches Gaynor with a perfectly timed shot, dropping him in the final 20 seconds. Gaynor would bounce back in the final minute of the fourth and just bombard Kelly with unanswered shots to where Kelly eventually made it down to the canvas. Just before the barrage, Kelly sustained damage to his eye where it quickly closed up. In fear of a stoppage, Kelly goes on the immediate offensive right at the start of the fifth round, stalking Gaynor. Within 15 seconds, Kelly finds his mark with the first punch thrown in the round dropping Gaynor. Gaynor would barely hold on and survive the fifth round. After back and forth action, Kelly getting the better of it, but at the price of his eye getting worse. Phone booth fighting in round eight with Gaynor ripping apart Kelly. Gaynor is letting his hands go now, forgetting that Kelly is one of the biggest power punchers in the weight class. Kelly catches him with the perfect shot, leveling Gaynor to the canvas, resulting in a knockout victory for Kelly. Kevin Kelly's nostrils now, both sides bleeding. Down goes Gaynor. Oh, Kevin Kelly visited. has done it. Meanwhile, to end the 1995 year, rising UK star Prince Sassim Hamed captures the WBO title against Steve Robinson, stopping him in the eighth round. The flair, the flamboyancy, mixed with the sheer athleticism and power. It's a combination that hasn't really been seen in UK boxing, and before Hamed even won the belt, he was selling out massive venues, which is a rare sight in the lower weight classes of Western boxing culture, as it's predominantly ruled by heavyweight with the exception of welterweight and middleweight. The buzz in the UK of Hamed was so large that American fight fans will get the privilege to watch his fights as Showtime got in before HBO on the airing rights to Hamid's fights in 1996. It's a big deal when you're sending the broadcast team overseas for live coverage. Americans will get the first look at Hamed and his second title defense against number one contender Daniel Alisea. It will be a rocky start on Hamed's Showtime debut as he gets dropped in the first round for the first time in his pro career. Hamid would quickly bounce back in the second round, dropping Daniel, then to brutally put him away moments later. The commentators in shock of his punching power. Hamed's second fight he will be matched up against two-time champion Manuel Mendina in Dublin, Ireland. In a tough fight, Hamed will get the stoppage in the 11th round. 
Ahmed's promoter, Frank Warren, and their venture with Don King and Showtime, their goal is to set up a unification. That fighter will be long reigning IBF champion and number one ranked fighter by Ring Magazine, Tom Johnson. Ahmed's fight with Medina would be a setup fight for the Tom fight as Tom was fighting on the undercard making his 11th title defense. That fight will be set up for February 1997. Kevin Kelly would end the year off big, defeating undefeated Edwin Santana by unanimous decision. While HBO is exploring options for Kelly, they do state that it will be highly unlikely if he can get a fight with Hamed, even if he travels to the UK because Team Hamed's current deal with Showtime and Don King. Kelly would comfortably sit on his rank at number 5 in the weight class. To start 97 off, Hamed puts up a spectacular performance defeating Tom Johnson in their unification, making Hamed the top guy at featherweight. Though, Johnson is all heart and world champion. But this fight is almost over, fellas. Moody Battle is looking very close. The ropes just held Johnson up. That's it. It's all over. The Prince becomes king for a night in the featherweight division. Outside of Tom Johnson, Showtime and Don King did not have much to offer when it came to the future of Hamed with their stable. HBO on the other end was beginning to look like a much more attractive pick for the cash cow. HBO had Kevin Kelly, Marco Antonio Barrera, Eric Morales, who will someday become a featherweight, number 3 ranked featherweight Wilfredo Vasquez, and number 2 ranked featherweight Luisita Espinoza. Just barely three months later, Hamed is fighting Billy Hardy, stopping him in the first round. And two months later, in the Wembley Arena, he's up against Juan Gerardo Cabrera, stopping him in the second round. And once again, two months later, in October, Hamed will have his biggest show with a special somebody in attendance, with a massive TV deal waiting for him. Hamed would put up his most crowd-pleasing highlight reel performance, beating Jose Badillo, stopping him in the seventh round. Look at this, I think he's trying to do all this for the Sheffield fans. He's playing to the audience. Blood coming from his nose. This could be the finish now. They want to stop it. Badillo's corner want to stop it. They've rescued him. With this W here, it set up an audition for a massive TV fight deal with HBO. This audition takes place in Madison Square Garden two months from now, and the opponent, the man in the front row, Kevin Kelly. You relax. You gonna get knocked out? Let me tell you. In your hometown. Nah, you had a great performance. At New you're York. Nice, you nice and hyped. Madison That's Square fine. Garden. But I'm the real I deal. I can't wait to beat you up. I'm the real deal. I I'm looking to wait. your face, and I'll tell you the face. Go on, go on, go on. Look I'm going to smoke your boots. We'll see. We'll see. Because I am the best featherweight in the world. This deal guarantees Hamed to earn $2 million a fight. This is also a huge gamble for HBO because this was just after the Tyson vs. Holyfield rematch, which was currently the worst moment in sports history, resulting in Tyson to be suspended, his Vegas boxing license revoked, Don King's partnership with MGM Grand to be parted completely, and I mean completely to where King was forced to sell 618,577 shares of the MGM stock at the time was below $10, which was still worth $27.5 million. In the course of a decade, it had risen up to $96, and probably way more if King continued to put on big events. With King and Showtime and a restructuring period, HBO was going to make the gamble and try and make Hamed a pay-per-view star by 1999, exactly around the time Tyson returns back to boxing. Keep in mind, Tyson is still on a Showtime contract, but he was no longer with Don King. As training camp begins and fight week comes closer, Ahmed's relations with his trainer Engel started to sour right in the open during media workout sessions. Ahmed frustrated that he's not getting enough in and Engel doing his best of calming his fighter down in fears of him encountering an injury due to overtraining. Kevin Kelly is having the training camp of a lifetime. The young and very talented Zab Judah was brought in to be Kevin Kelly's sparring partner. When it came to the final pageantries, both guys putting up a good show, promoting the fight. During the weigh-in, Hamed weighed in at 126 on the dot, and Kelly at 125 and a half. I've watched Kevin Kelly a lot, and he's tough. 
It takes a lot of courage to come out here with this kind of promotion and fight somebody like Kevin. What's he got to do to conquer America, to capture the hearts? I mean, he's got to win, hasn't he, this one? He basically has to do one thing, win, and probably win big. Fans of all walks filled up the arena, including boxing greats and celebrities. Kelly was the first to come out. The native New Yorker had quite the reception in his backyard. Going back to this December 97 article, it states that Hamed is bringing his rave parties overseas. This is really a reference to his style, but also his huge Adidas endorsement, which can be seen everywhere in the ring. Adidas in association with London's The Mystery of Sound to promote their compilation electronic album, The Annual Three, with their mix playing all throughout the event. Hamed will begin to make his first entrance on US soil you will have a custom built runway stage set up for this walkout from the opposite end compared to the traditional walkout area Kelly came from. Ahmed would relish and soak up the moment waiting for his cue to come in as Will Smith's Men in Black theme is playing as an introduction. All while Kelly gets on top of the ropes calling out Hamed WWE style. Once the second song came on, the prince would make his walk as confetti is falling from the air. As Hamed approaches the ring, he inspects the ring ropes. These ropes are a bit more stiffer and the material looks to be of a suede material compared to the leather or slippery synthetic material. Hamed brilliantly gives what the crowd wants in the pre-fight hype and pulls off his signature ring flip and immediately gets in the face of Kelly, creating a fun moment of the two exchanging trash talks with the ref Benji Estevez breaking them up numerous times. After Buffer announces Kevin, Kevin walks back over to Hamed, where Hamed walks over to him and continues their face off. It got broken up again. The blue corner, wearing leopard with Adidas trim. He weighs 126 pounds also. And he also has an outstanding professional record of 28. Once Buffer is about to finish Hamed's name, he yells it out with Buffer as he is back in Kevin's face. Benji couldn't help to break character for a brief second and sit back and enjoy a very unusually special pre-fight buildup. Presenting Prince Nazi. The final face-off will take place, and here we go with round one. Obey my commands at all times. May the best man win. Touch up. Let's go. Come on, guys. Touch it up. All right. Let's do this. Inquiring minds want to know, is Hamed a prince or a frog? Soon as the bell rings, Hamed is right at the center of the ring, launching a leaping left hook. First minute and some change. Both guys are feeling each other out, landing the jab rather effectively but no power shots yet. He would throw the first power shot since the first five seconds of the round, which would miss Kelly. He would follow up and land a perfectly timed uppercut to the body, this being the first scoring shot of the round between both men. Kelly would come back and just graze Hamed with an overhand right. As Hamed is turning Kelly around, Hamed decides to take the risk and unload on Kelly on the ropes. Kelly had Hamed timed and locked in within a second and cracks Hamed with the biggest shot of the fight, sending Hamed to the canvas. Hamed is a puzzle that Kelly is unable to solve. But down goes the Prince on Kelly's first serious landed punch. A looping right hand put Hamed down. Second time in his career he's been down in the first round. Kelly plays it smart. He knows it was a flash knockdown and Hamed is perfectly fine. He decides not to be overly aggressive and finishes the round on top. Kelly starts round two with the momentum he had at the end of the first, landing a perfect jab on Hamed. Hamed's rhythm is out of sync and Kelly is taking full advantage of that, conservatively pressing the fight. Kelly would throw a beautifully timed hook, sending Hamed to the canvas for a second time. Hamed quickly gets up to where Kelly had mistaken if he even hit the canvas or not and gets another shot in to make sure as the ref did not jump in on time. And one of the things that could happen would be that the prince was exposed as a fraud. His gloves touched the canvas, the count begins, the second knockdown for Kelly. So one knockdown in each round now for Kevin Kelly. 
By this point, Hamed is mad, embarrassed, and eagerly wanting to get in on the offensive, and the HBO crew is in doubts of Hamed's prospects. Kelly made a huge mistake believing Hamed's off-balanceness was due to him being hurt by that shot, but it was because of his style. Kelly is on full attack mode going in for the finish. Hamed evades Kelly's offense, spins him around, resulting in Kelly to slip to the canvas. Hamed gets his payback and hits Kelly while he's down. The ref letting that slide since he had let it slide with Kelly. Kelly continues what he left off, attacks Hamed, getting the better of the exchange. Hamed is slowly starting to find his rhythm. By this point, Kelly is just following Hamed and not leading with the jab like he was doing earlier. Hamed immediately sees that Kelly is right in his range, no sign of setting up to throw a jab or a defense really, and Hamed lunges a huge left hand flooring Kelly. Kevin knew he got him good, and he acknowledges it to Hamed as he easily gets back up to continue on. Seen the evidence of that as yet. I think the mistake he made. There we go. Right right there. There's the power. There's the power you were talking about. And Kelly is stunned. Hey, come on, baby. Kelly would get some effective shots in, but he has completely abandoned the jab which is slowly but surely leaving him open for something big as he aggressively presses forward, ending round two. Halfway through the first minute of the third, Kevin would land the first scoring shot of the round. When Kevin is using his jab, he is highly effective. This whole two minutes have been all Kevin Kelly. Ahmed would find his rhythm and rally in the final 30 seconds as Kelly once again abandons his jab, but it wasn't enough to have the round stolen from him. In the quarter leading up to the fourth round, Kevin's coach is being very stern with Kelly, telling him he needs to be using more of his jab. If not, there will be problems later in the fight. Sit down. Good boss. Look at me. Now listen. If you don't use your jab and if you don't move your head, we're going to run into difficulties and I don't want that. What we worked on to get this guy out of here was our, our tempo. Correct? Gotcha. When you're hunting a peanut, think what you did to Craig. Think what you did to Flat Top. Think what you did to Judah. Think all these things, how you let them hands go. Kevin would start the fourth off using his jab and finding success real early. At the 2 minute 14 second marker, Kelly would just graze Hamed with an overhand left, then to find Hamed in an off balance position where he was able to score more to the head, but he's no longer resetting and following up with the jab, he's just lunging at this point, and Hamed is now trying to time Kevin. Very shortly after this, Hamed would find that opening and crack right through Kevin, tying up the knockdown count, and this time, Kelly is hurt. Leather in return. Down goes Kelly on two hard left hands. Hamed is going for the finish, but he forgets that Kelly is one of the biggest punchers in the weight class. Kelly would catch Hamed, knocking him down for the third time in the fight, though it was more because of balance. This gives Kelly essential time to recover. Kelly a little slow to respond here. You gotta be careful mixing it up with Kelly because he can fight. And that's gonna be ruled a knockdown as Nassim's glove grazed the canvas. So there's the count for that. Third knockdown of Hamed. Kelly gets his legs back, but he's going all out right here, right now. Whatever happens, happens. You can clearly tell by Kevin's body language. As soon as the fight continues, he is going to leave everything out this round with the mentality that it will not go to the fifth round. Kevin did not allow Hamed to set his feet and began bombarding him. Due to that, Kevin was able to score big and avoid getting hit with anything threatening. At the 51 second marker, Hamed was finally able to set his feet, land a big shot on Kelly, then another as Kelly tried rushing forward with no jab or anything, resulting in him to get floored to the canvas. Kevin was unable to make the count and the fight was waved off. Leaping right hand by the Prince. Ooh. And a hard left. And Kelly's down for the third time. Whoa. Six, seven, eight, nine. He's got a half a minute and he He's is gone. definitely hurt. He's and the for real. fight is over. He's for real. The Prince is for real. punching power, George. Fourth round knockout victory and ninth successful title defense for Prince Nassim Hamed. What we 
just saw was the Hagler Hearns of featherweight fighting. We have That's never good. seen a fight like this in the featherweight division on this level. Unquestionably the most memorable fight of 1997. Final punch stats, Hamid threw 184, landing 81 at 44%. Kelly, 154, landing 72 at 47%. Besides the usual questions of what's to come in the Prince's career, one question that, that did stand out, how much of an influence he would have on upcoming fighters or even current fighters when it comes to ring wall entrances, as this was completely unheard of in America. George Foreman would give a good two cents on this topic that would, in retrospect, age wonderfully. Will we see? Other fighters, particularly in the higher weight classes, trying to fight with that extraordinarily unusual style. That he Something is going to have, have to happen because, listen, how do you top this show? If you're a boxer sitting in your home watching this, you say to yourself, I've got to reinvent myself. If, if I'm going to go back out in Madison Square Garden and places like this, I can't come out with the old robe and up two, three. I've got to do something to reinvent my career. This guy would probably revolutionize entries of boxers. Due to Hamed getting the W, and getting it in a fashion that was billed as the Hagler Hearns of the featherweight division, HBO was all in on this massive six fight deal to make Hamed into a pay-per-view star starting in 1998. Kevin Kelly would continue to rinse, wash, and repeat. He would win a couple, lose against a top fighter, and be labeled a shot fighter, win a couple again, score an upset against a prospect, and find himself back into a big fight. This would carry on for almost a decade till ultimately Kelly hung up the gloves and retired in 2009. For the continuation of what happens next in Prince Nassim Hamed's career, watch my tale of Hamed vs. Barrera. And on top of that, this is a tale of Prince Nassim Hamed vs. Kevin Kelly. For more tales, be sure to like, share, and if you're new, subscribe. Subscribe to the Patreon for patron back projects, as this video here is a patron back project and early access. I'm Alfa Sancho, and I'm out.